Welcome back to Talking Shop. We are here looking at uh, proper number five, the epistle reading Romans 4, verse 13 through 25. Uh, we'll take a good hard look at this text. Some good things going on here. Some maybe difficult things to work through as you're preaching this to your people. But uh, we'll get after it and let's get going. Here, let's do it. Away, spit out my Lord in every way. Yet I'm still welcome. Sorry. Uh, we're in Pentecost 2. Pentecost 2. It is Romans 4, 13 to 25. Now, we got Adam back today, so the gang's all here. That's kind of cool, right? Uh, his schedule finally worked out. So, Romans 4, 13 to 25. The great section of the text, right? This is the, the promise of faith, right? This mm -hmm. is all about Abraham. Uh, hard one to preach, though. Certainly, I would say the first one, two, three, four, five, six verses, kind of in that whole background of Abraham stuff, hard, hard to preach. Yep. Uh, I, I, I mean, my suggestion is you kind of do a background of, of Abraham, literally, kind of tell that story a little bit, uh, and then you can lead into that with that Old Testament text in their head so that they, because chances are, at least 50% of the folks sitting in your pew, you go to Abraham, they go, oh yeah, I know who it is, and they actually don't have a clue, right? And so that's what these first verses are. Verse 13, uh, not according to the law was the goodness to Abraham and his offspring, but according to righteousness by faith. Um, yeah, so, so th we start off with this really very clear law gospel dynamic uh, of what's going on here. Right? Yeah. Not according to law, but righteous by faith. Yeah. Uh, and verse 14 toes into that because if it's according to hearing the law, faith is null and promise is void. Yeah. Uh, this is Walther, this is Luther, you know what I mean? They, they all play off verse 14 all the time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is Romans 4 is a really huge part of how we do that law gospel dynamic uh, as. as, as Lutheran pastors as a church, that sort of thing. Um, promises void. Verse 15, the law brings wrath, uh, but if there's no law, there's no transgression. Um, so it plays that piece as well. Um, and here's, here always comes that argument, right, with like, well, what do you do with somebody who's lived in the jungle their whole life, and then you know, and, and they've never heard it? What, what do you do with that? How, how, if you may know you guys, you've been pastors long enough. Have you gotten that question before? What do you do with, what do, what do you do with that question? I think if you actually back up in Romans a uh, couple chapters, you actually have an answer to that. And yeah, he gave them up to the passions of their own flesh and all that stuff, right? In Is that, that there's nobody without the law because there's a natural law that testifies to their being a creator. Mm -hmm. Right. Written on our hearts, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. So there it is. There's your stump the pasture answer for the. <laughs> That's the direction I would go. Is yeah. a, a natural law answer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find that in C.S. Lewis, right? Uh, Mere mm -hmm. Christianity. Bonhoeffer's ethics. His he's creation making and fall. The case that all cultures around the world have some standard of what is murder. Mm -hmm. right. You can't just go around killing. Anybody, you want. right? Yeah, and same thing with sex, mm -hmm. right? Like, you can't just have relations with anybody. They, there's always rules around those things. Now yeah. there might be exceptions to those rules, or might right. be things those, that, that, we, things that we would say morally is, is are morally reprehensible. But for the most part, yes, you're right. Everybody has some rules mm -hmm. around those things. How you treat your parents, on uh, whether you can, and how, how you deal with mm -hmm. uh, with telling lies, you know that kind of thing. You know, there, there's always all that kind of yeah, good. Yeah, it's like the Jungle Book, Kipling's Jungle Book, right? The law of the jungle is just mm -hmm. there. They they know of it. They they know how it works. Yeah, that's good. Good. <clears throat> yeah, good. That's a good answer. Uh, verse 16. That's why it depends on faith, right? Because mm -hmm. law doesn't work. Right, natural law or otherwise. That's why it depends on faith. So the promise might rest by grace and guaranteed to all. I think that that's a huge piece to it, right? It's it's, it's, a, it's not based on you or your performance or your lack of performance or whatever it is. It's based on a, on a relationship that God dumps on you. Yeah. Uh, and guaranteed to all adherents of the law and those who share Abraham's faith, the father of us all. Right. So now all of a sudden, th this is that piece where. Uh, Paul begins to make that argument about 
Abraham being everybody's father, mm -hmm. right? Jew, Gentile, like the whole thing. Yeah. Um, which is going to carry out the, through the rest of Romans. Right. Uh, and so you kind of have to know that heading into, I mean, like when you get to chapter 5, chapter 6, right, all of that builds on this idea that we carry Abraham's faith, mm -hmm. uh, that Abraham wasn't justified because he was a cool guy. Abraham was justified because God picked him. Yeah, there's a there's a great episode of uh, Ringside that came out during Lent um, with was it Dominic R Riley? Is that who that guy is? Donovan Riley. Donovan Riley. Yeah, sorry, there's too many D names. Uh, Donovan Riley. He he talked about Abraham and like God taking him out. Uh, to the salt pits, right? That's where you went to die. God taking him up on a mountain and saying, kill your son, that's what all the other gods did. And then he said, nope, I've got a different way. Here you go, here's, here's this sacrifice for you. It's a, a great uh, way of describing the story of Abraham that I hadn't heard uh, put that way before. Mm -hmm. um, but that's Ringside Preachers, uh, Donovan and yeah. uh, Joel Hess did that episode. Yeah, so. yeah no, killing your children was a standard thing mm -hmm. for the gods, right? Mm -hmm. Kill your kid for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, and then on verse 17, he quotes Genesis 17. Go figure, right? I've made mm -hmm. you the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. 17 verse 5. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, the, in the, the presence of God and who he believed, who gives life to the dead and, and calls into existence once the things that do not exist, right? So it's this idea that I'm gonna make you a father. I call stuff out of dead, which which is just so funny because, is it the next verse or is it, is it close on us? It's it's coming. It's coming. It's toward the 19. one with Sarah. Yeah, that's 19. Yeah, so we'll get there. But yeah, he's setting this principle, right? It calls into things that don't exist, right? God mm -hmm. can do whatever he wants, essentially. Um, I'm gonna use that as a jumping off point to mm -hmm. talk about faith, mm -hmm. right? That, and go back to Genesis and use this as the grounds for it of, right, God spoke everything into creation. Mm -hmm. He brought existence from non-existence. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's also how he creates faith in you. Oh, that's good. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. In that there is nothing in there and that he creates faith in you. Right. And so sometimes we can start to go down the road of faith being our work, something that we do, something that we create something that we well up. No, faith itself is a gift from God that he creates and puts in you. Right. Which is right. why when you're having that conversation with Uncle Bill or whoever it is, and they just kind of look at you with that glassy stare, like, how can you possibly? I mean, they don't even get it, right? It's because that faith chunk is is missing mm -hmm. from it all. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. That's a good, uh, a good example. And I think you could probably carry that through the rest of this the rest of this, if you're preaching this, right? Mm -hmm. That whole idea that bring something out of nothing. Um, verse 18, and hope he believed against hope, right? That he would become the father of many nations according to what was told to him. And, and then he quotes another time when God said that to him from Genesis 15, right? So shall your offspring be, yeah. right? even though he didn't have any offspring. And then, and then in verse 19, you get, you get that really very almost funny thing, yeah. right? Uh, he, he didn't weaken when he considered his own body dead, and the way the Greek reads it, when he considers Sarah's womb to be dead, you know, everything's mm -hmm. dead, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, when you read it, I mean, our English doesn't really do it the justice yeah. of this, but when you read it in, 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 the, in the original language, right, this is, it's just death everywhere, mm -hmm. but yet he's already been talking about a God who brings life out of death. So I think you can tie what Adam said about the you know, bringing or calling things into existence, the things that don't exist, with the next line. I mean, ironically, Paul probably did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. In hope, he believed against hope. Right? Those are yeah. those are two lines that you can you can grab onto. Those are good gospel handles. Yeah, um, hope against hope, or yeah, yeah some, and that and that's because you're hopeless, because you're dead, you're dead in your right. trespasses, and and if you use refrains, like refrains are really good. Hope against hope, you know, you could mm -hmm. always do that. Um, I think verse 19 is a really good place where you know we all have felt like that. Mm -hmm. We're just dead, you yeah. know, and, and and hope against hope. Yeah, that God's promise, you know, that that kind of idea. Um, yeah. 
because 20 is the kind of the gospel side of it. If, if 19 is the, the death and law side of it, mm -hmm. 20 is the gospel side of it, right? Uh, uh, no distrust made him waver about God's promises, but he grew strong in his faith, uh, giving glory to God. It's essentially, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe in God. I'm going to let my emotions catch up. You know, yeah. I'm going to believe in God. I'm going to believe he's going to come through. And when he does, then I'm going to celebrate it, even if I don't feel it right now, that kind of thing. And I think that's a big part of the Christian life, uh, is believing even before it happens, uh, having hope in it even before it happens, even if you're not feeling it today, living mm -hmm. like you do, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. That's, yeah. that's what I was going to say is it's a good way, that could be a good way to talk about loving your neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, because there's many days where you just don't feel like loving your neighbor because your neighbor is an idiot. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. very, very true. Like, uh, you want, you have to let your feelings catch up with what your faith says. Mm -hmm. And it's a faith that's been given to you from outside of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, good. And, and of course, 20, 21 also dovetails into this because Abraham's fully convinced that God can do what he promises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, I'm going to go from here to doing hospital visits, right? I, I have an optimistic streak, right? Do hospital visits. People, I just assume, right, they're with medical professionals. The medical professionals are going to give them the medicine, do the surgery, right? People who, they're in church and, like, their color is not good, mm -hmm. like, they're not getting enough oxygen, they need to be on oxygen, they need some sort of surgery, mm -hmm. they need their medicine adjusted, right? Go to the medical professionals, medical professionals fix them, right? That they're, they're gonna fix them. Until you're bedside with somebody on hospice, mm -hmm. and you're with them and they stop breathing, yeah. and they die, mm -hmm. there, there's no coming back from that. Right. Right, there is nothing there. Mm -hmm. that, like medical professionals can't help anymore they, they are dead yeah yeah right but this is going to get us to the resurrection in verses 24 and 25 and i think what back to creating something out of nothing mm -hmm. one day we are going to be a bunch of dead bodies <clears throat> there's not yeah. going there's going to be nothing there there will be no breath of life in us and Jesus is going to come back and create something out of nothing. Right. Yep. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, you could even, I don't, I don't know, depending on what your, what your congregation can stand, you know, what, what their temperament is. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you could even go to, you know, in, in my, in my past career, I used to make a living scooping bodies out of San Diego Bay. And I, I can tell you that a dead body doesn't look like a living body. He was a police officer. Okay. We, should, <laughs> we should maybe throw yeah, that out there. Yeah, we can throw that out there. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's when you have a, a dead person literally in your arms, mm -hmm. you know, because you're scooping them into a back of a boat or you're loading yeah. them up into the back of a coroner's van or whatever it is, uh, that body looks different mm -hmm. from a living body. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it, it's dead. I mean, and, yep. and there's no mistaking that, that, that there's no life in that body yeah. anymore, right. you know? And, and so I, I think our culture's lost that a little bit because mm -hmm. we sanitize death, you know, right. and, and we, we embalm and we open a casket. And it looks like, well, grandma's sleeping. Yeah. And that's all it looks like. Mm -hmm. Instead of, oh, grandma's actually decaying. Well, she's not decaying because she's filled with embalming fluid, right? But and all her guts have been sucked out and, right. and put into a dish and somewhere. Keeping her on ice. Right, mm -hmm. exactly, and we've kept her cold, you know, like a fish, you know, <laughs> you know I mean, and it's very mm -hmm. strange what we do in many ways, um, but when you're, when you're dead, you look dead, yep. uh, and there's nothing there, and that's, that's kind of my point to that, is that idea that there's just nothing there anymore, um, and this is why his faith is counted him as righteousness, right, because he's fully convinced that even though that's what it looks like, and that's what it is, that God can bring something out of nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, and this whole this whole section here brings to mind the the binding of Isaac, right? Mm. Because that promise had already been given mm -hmm. that the, that you will become the father of many nations, 
And then God tells him, I want you to go up on this mountain and kill your son, your only son, the one whom you love, the one who, through whom is the promise. Go up there and kill him. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the reading of that every time, right? Mm -hmm. what's, what's Abraham thinking? I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to raise my son from the dead. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to look like, but he's going to have to resurrect my son because he's telling me to kill him, but he says I'm going to have children like the sea, you know what I mean, in this kind of conflict right. that he does. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and this, of course, verse 23, and this is the beauty where all of a sudden we, we show up in the text in many ways, right? Because it's not only written for, for Abraham, but it's written for us as well. That's yeah. 23, 24. Um, and it will be counted to us who believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. Uh, the resurrection changes everything, right? I mean, that's that's the linchpin of yeah. our faith, right? Easter yep. Easter's the one the one holiday that they just can't hijack. They don't know what to do with it. <laughs> you know, bunnies and eggs, baby. Yeah, exactly. That's all they got. But still, it's pretty, which, which are still symbols of it's, new life. Uh, new life, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and th there's no way around it. There's no way to there's no way to commercialize. Jesus risen from the dead yeah. without accepting Jesus risen from the dead. Right? Right. The, the undoing of death. Right, right, mm -hmm. the, of that totality of what, you, of what we think we see when we look at a dead body. Right. Um, you have all of this death in verse nine, yeah, in verse mm -hmm. 19. Yeah, 18, Considered 19, his own yeah. body is dead, mm -hmm. Sarah's womb is dead. Mm -hmm. Everything's dead, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like Tim said, if you're your congregation's temperament could handle some some of the more graphic uh, kind of. And you have of, a screen. And you got a screen. Yeah, I mean, you can do some things. You'd have to be that, but, really careful because the problem is, is that imagery like that is going to take over, right? And all of a sudden, people will not remember Romans four. They won't remember the grace by faith. They won't remember the promise of Abraham right. for them. All they remember is that pastor put up a picture of a dead body on a screen. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a crucifix in your church and do the you same get a, you thing. Get a crucifix, yeah. <laughs> but Jesus yeah. isn't nailed to our crucifix. He's up there with his hands uh, up. With like his that. hands up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you, or you, that could be the imagery you use is, right. is, is a crucifix, hmm. right? Something like that, like like an old school Jesus dying on the cross right. crucifix, yeah. Because that that one might not distract quite as bad as as mm -hmm. a, you know like an actual picture of a dead body. But yeah, imagery you got to be really careful with it. Um, Jesus was raised from the dead. It might work if you've got like one of those contemporary services that they do at like a bar or something, you know, that kind of thing. No, seriously. Yeah. I mean, if you've got one of those services, it's yeah. like, you know, whatever. What, I forget, they have some really creative names for that stuff. But uh, if you do something like that and the, and the situation is right, otherwise, yeah, stick with crucifixes. Don't distract your folks. Yeah. Uh, Jesus was raised from the dead, delivered for our sins. Raised for justification, right? And that's, of course, the, the culmination of the whole thing. And that's why the resurrection matters, yep. right? That's the, the imagery I like to use for that is, the, is a payment, right? When you, when you go to the grocery store and you stick your debit card in there and it's going, do 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 and then it's, it finally says approved, right? The approval, that's the resurrection. That's that the payment was good. God accepted the payment. Yeah, um, yeah. And without the resurrection, you just got a dead Jew. Yeah, right, right, right. And unlike your credit card, you don't have to pay it back. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I said debit. Oh, debit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think the other thing uh, here is because there are so many Old Testament references, mm -hmm. right, Abraham, it's not like we're believing something new. Yeah. Right? We're actually just in the line of Abraham mm -hmm. by faith. Right, like Abraham is saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in the coming Christ alone. Mm -hmm. Right, we're all saved the same way yeah. through Jesus. Abraham was just looking forward in time to the fulfillment of the promise. Now right, we look back. We were born 2,000 years too late. We just look <laughs> backward in time to the fulfillment of the promise, and we look forward in time to the return of Jesus to the ultimate fulfillment of the mm -hmm. promise. Right, right? Yeah. so. In a sense, we're all looking forward. Yeah. Yeah. And always looking back. Yeah. And so yeah. We're, we're all saved the same way. It's not like God has changed his mind and Abraham was saved one way and we're saved a different way. We're all saved 
the same way. Yeah. Grace by faith is not something that the American church came up with in the last right. 200 years. It's not, even a, it's not even like an oddly Reformation. Right. It's mm -mm. not a Reformation doctrine. At all. Mm -mm. This is just simply what has been believed about God forever. Right. Mm -hmm. right? That he's going to do what he promises. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Hey, like, subscribe. Let us know how you used it. Let us know what illustrations you use or something we said helped you out. Help us help you, right? Uh, and God bless your preaching. <laughs>